Greetings all, Ferrari Mount 601 here. Welcome back to Cold Waters and welcome back on board the USS Iowa. Where are we? We are above the Arctic Circle, not too far off the coast of Novaya Zemlya, or however you would actually pronounce that, because I do not at all profess to be fluent in Russian. However, we have got some bogeys no, no, in the general one, area. One, 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 designated Sierra One. Sierra One, what is Sierra One? We have no idea what Sierra One is right now. Okay. Okay. I can assume that they're no, Russian. No, Sierra Two is a little bit closer. One, zero. Designated Sierra Two. Okay. Anyway, we have got some of the best firepower that has ever been assembled in terms of naval history. We have got the Iowa class battleship the class leader USS Iowa and well we're gonna figure out what is out there let's turn her on sure that we don't hit these icebergs. It's pretty big icebergs, wow. Interesting. Um, the Titanic, obviously the most famous ship ever to hit an iceberg, um, quite similar in terms of size and displacement to an Iowa-class battleship. And even somewhat similar in construction. Titanic, of course, having 100% riveted construction. The Iowas, particularly the early Iowas, um, Iowa and New Jersey, the first two built, um, they had a hybrid construction. Lots of riveting, just like Titanic, but also welding. Welding was a new technology at the time. And of course, uh, these ships were built out of steel plate, much like Titanic was. So Titanic, when it hit the iceberg, we had uh, a lot of rivets popping along the seam lines between hull plates, the shell plating there, and it caused uh, a tremendous incursion of water above the part of the ship where uh, we had a double bottom. The Iowa-class battleships had a triple bottom, so even better there in terms of water incursion with separation of shell plating, but similar construction Sierra, methods. One. Last bearing, one, one, three. Therefore, we're going to want to avoid hitting icebergs. We are not getting a whole lot of information here from these targets. We just have Sierra 1. We have lost Sierra 2. We're going to try and figure out what is going on. Set 114. Come left to 114. Helm I. Come left to 114. We are at 121. That's going to put us on a pretty close course to this iceberg. We're going to want to watch that. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra one. Last bearing one. One. Three. Contact okay. faded. So evidently we don't have too many problems right now in terms of aggressive contacts. We just have uh, to make sure that they stay relatively passive. I'm gonna load it. Ah, navigation reports ice ahead. Yeah, ice ahead. We got that. I'm going to load a TASM in there, that's an anti-ship missile, just in case somebody decides to become a little bit uppity. However, we should be okay. CR-1 upgraded to Master-1, okay. Master-1, what do we have? We still do not have a type in terms of what this vessel is. He's relatively close. Okay, we have a missile launch, we have a missile launch. Missile inbound. He is a short range missile. That is more so an anti aircraft oh, missile. Steady course. Steady course. Where are we? We are a bit too close to that iceberg for comfort. We're going to continue to steam 
full ahead here and see what's going on. We're on flank power from our engines. 212,000 shaft horsepower from the uh, four turbine engines here on the Iowa. Oof. Second missile. Okay. Um, we'll think about countermeasures. We have chaff and the Sea Whiz if we need it. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, two. Last bearing, one. One, two. Contact faded. Not sure if we're going to hit this iceberg yet. Might want to bring our course just a little bit to the right if we need to. Missile launch detected. 10 degrees right rudder. Let's bring it a little bit to the uh, starboard side there. Should be okay. Okay. Be okay, you can see underwater here, the bottom of the iceberg. Should be well clear. Missile bearing 114 distance, 10,000 yards. The iceberg may or may not give us some shielding from this, actually. Anyway, we're going to be standing by ready on the chaff. Con sonar, master one is classified Cresta. as escort. All right, so we have a Cresta class ship. Con sonar, lost contact. Sierra two, last bearing one, one, two. Contact chaff. Missile pass directly overhead. Okay. Missile launch detected. That's actually a really good shot from him. Missile launch detected. It's a really good shot from him. <laughs> Alongside the iceberg. I wonder if he can see that on this radar scope. Probably not. Missile launched it. Got another missile, missile coming in. Got visual on him from 10,000 yards. CR2 upgraded to Master 2. Okay. Got a missile coming in. Another one at 10,000 yards. 3.3 thousand yards. We're hit. We are hit. Okay. Port midships just aft of the navigation bridge. What is our damage control situation? 83%. Set damage control to our diesel. Damage control parties lay into the diesel space. We got chaff going up. It's going to be a second hit. We're hit on the bow. Okay, we got two hits. Not good. Where is the second bit of damage? Yep, port bow. Right ahead. 66% hull integrity. We have more missiles inbound. We need to be getting our vertical launch tubes active. Missiles outbound, half fast. Right. Missile launch detected. Step by. And void chaff. Okay, we've been hit. That's a third hit. Pumps are hit. Okay. That's a fourth hit. We're in trouble. We got engine room problems. We have lost our engines. Not good. Propulsion. Damage control to propulsion, please. Okay, we still have our weapon systems intact. We are still able to go ahead two thirds. Some of our missiles get shot down. Another VLS away. That's another TASM. We've been hit for a fifth time. Still able to go ahead two thirds. Missile launch detected. Could be hit again. 
All right. We're done. Not good. Not good at all. We are going down by the head. Up to turret two already. Abandon ship. All hands. Abandon ship. And that is the first time in a very long time that an American battleship has been sunk in combat. I've not done a very good job with this, have I? Got explosions out there. I think our missiles have gotten shot down. Yikes. Not good. Not good, folks. We had two hits to the port bow. Obviously, big opening in the hull. One roughly midships just aft of the navigation bridge. Man, that goes all the way up to the uh, top of the armored citadel as well. That would have been a really devastating hit in real life. If you've ever been on board one of these ships, you know that there's a big difference between what you see topside versus what you see underneath. Once you start going down into the hull, you see just every compartment is armored and it's watertight and there's just, you can't imagine the amount of thought that went into these things in terms of preventing water ingress. So if you had a breach in a hull like that, where the torpedo defense is with the triple bottom as well as the armored citadel with um, special treatment steel that is basically making this whole armored box that comprises everything from just forward of turret one all the way to just aft of turret three. <sighs> that would have been a tremendous amount of force. Totally would have sucked on these ships. Never mind what was going on ahead. If you had a, a hull breach ahead, right where we see it here, you would have seen a lot of flooding forward of turret one, but that would have been able to be isolated. There wasn't a whole lot of reserve of buoyancy ahead of turret one because you had a lot of, um, first of all, the hull narrows out as you head to the bow, but it also goes up in terms of the shear line, which means that you lose your um, latitudinal volume. In other words, the ship narrows out towards the bow, but you also lose your reserve of buoyancy, which means that most of the ship, in terms of everything that you need to stay afloat, and therefore because of the architectural plan, everything that you need to stay operational is aft of that point. So basically turret one, aft through, just after turret three. That's where all of your command area is, it's where all of your intelligence area is in terms of your fire control, um, navigation, uh, engines, and all of that. It's all in that armored citadel, basically the box between turret one and turret three. Anything for or after that, you can lose that and you still keep the ship. Unfortunately, we had a hit midships right there. And that cost us everything. So being a battleship commander, probably best that I never got the chance to do that.